What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to a great episode of Lockdown Badgers. A new guest on the show today, and I can't wait to chop it up about... I'm, I talked to you about who I think the best player in the Badgers is this year. I said it's Braylon Allen. We got someone on the show to talk deeper about Braylon Allen and get into it. Let's go on Wisconsin. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Uh, and without further ado, we always, with the good guests, we always try to get in right away. We got uh, Max Chadwick joining the show today, pro football focused, college football analyst, and host of the preferred Walk On. Max, thank you so much for jumping on, my friend. No, thank you so much for having me on, Ryan. I'm, I'm really pumped to talk to you. Yeah, and one of the reasons we're doing this is you had an opportunity to talk to Braylon Allen, to sit down and talk to him. Uh, you've also written an article uh, uh, covering Braylon Allen, and you've done the top five returning running backs in 2023, also featuring Braylon Allen. So I want to take an opportunity to give you the chance to, where can people find your work, uh, especially for the fans of this show, the stuff with Braylon Allen? Yeah, man, I really appreciate you you letting me do that. So yeah, there's a feature article out on Braylon Allen, which you can find at pff.com, but I think... Uh, Something even cooler that we've been able to do recently is transition all these articles from they were supposed to all these interviews that were supposed to be feature articles to now YouTube videos, and that's why I preferred Walk On was created. And so, literally uh, two hours ago, I posted the Braylon Allen full interview. Um, and if you don't have to look at my ugly face all the time too, I put highlights of Braylon Allen there, put pictures of, of a bunch of different stuff that he was talking about there too. So yeah, check out preferred walk on college football show. Also, you could listen to it. If you're more of an audio listener is anywhere you get your podcast, but yeah, the, the full interview with Braylon Allen is now available on YouTube and not just a feature article anymore. And we'll definitely, uh, tweet that out as well. So if anybody following this show can go check that out, uh, highly recommend it. I want to start there. So what was it like talking about Braylon Allen? What did you take away just from the type of person he is and how well-spoken he is? Oh, he was one of my favorite interviews. I, I've Every player I've interviewed so far has been amazingly well-spoken, and he was no stranger to that either. And he was uh, my favorite moment. And it was actually – so every interview that I post on YouTube, I always put, like, the best moment as the, the beginning of it just to kind of, like, hype it up. My favorite moment from his interview – was we were talking about how he faced, uh, you know, stacked boxes, meaning like eight or more defenders in the box more than any other running back in college football, uh, because obviously everyone knew Wisconsin's going to run with the football and run with number zero. And he was talking about how difficult that was. And then I brought up, I was like, yeah, well, now you got Phil Longo coming in, the new offensive coordinator. And during his time at Ole Miss, North Carolina, you know, they were more of a spread offense and they faced stack boxes at one of the lowest rates in college football. Like, how excited are you that, you know, you're not going to be facing six, seven defensive linemen every time. And he was, you talk about how exciting he was. And I was like, okay, so you think you're gonna have your best year because of that? And he goes, man, I'm going to have my best year regardless of how many people are in the box. And I was like, hell yeah, man. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. So the confidence is through the roof. Um, his dream always as a kid was to become the next great Wisconsin running back. He mentioned Melvin Gordon was his favorite player. He mentioned that 408-yard Nebraska game. Uh, what That was kind of the moment he said that made him fall in love with, with Wisconsin and felt, make him fall with football, honestly. So his journey to becoming you know, one of those legends now, probably at running back for Wisconsin, is, is pretty cool and, and a dream come true for him. So, yeah, definitely one of my favorite interviews I've done so far. Let's go back to the point about the stack boxes because we talked about that on the show a lot. We, we've known what Wisconsin's offense has been for years, but the numbers are staggering, right? Yeah. 268 times uh, running into an eight or nine man box, I believe it was, which is substantially more than the second place running back, power five running back. Um, how eye popping are those numbers when you see nobody else in the power five level is even close to Braylon? Yeah, exactly. So the, I went in that feature article. I uh, over the last two years, so when Braylon Allen started playing college football, among Power Five running backs, he has 62 more carries against boxes with eight or more defenders in it than any other Power Five running back. Uh, 62 more than Tavion Thomas, and then after Tavion Thomas, he's got like a hundred more than the third place running back, which is Blake Corum. Um, so yeah, Braylon Allen is playing, you know, against. Defenses that know he's going to get the football, which makes him rushing for 1,300, 1,200 yards even more impressively. And even more impressively, he was a 17 and 18 year old uh, doing that, too. So, yeah, I mean, he he's excited for sure now about not having to face eight or more box defenders in every single play like he was, you know, in his first two years. 
And then you bring up, yeah, the the logical transition there is Phil Longo coming in, what they did in North Carolina. Obviously, those running backs face uh, stacked boxes at a very, very low rate. Um, mm-hmm. Is there a correlation, however, because people will say, well, you're facing stacked boxes, but you have multiple tight ends. You have a fullback. You have another offensive lineman. There will be less blockers in the box as well. Do you factor that in? Did Braylon Allen talk about that potentially? Yeah, he did. Actually, he brought up that up. I was like, yeah, you know, usually we're facing nine, ten guys in the box, and we usually have six, seven, maybe eight blockers at most uh, for there. But, yeah, he, he still mentioned that. But I, I, th- I still think, you know, he was very excited about ma- even only having five blockers still facing, you know, five, six defenders in the box. And you mentioned Phil Longo. I mean, you look at that air raid offense that he runs at North Carolina. Over the last two years, they have the fourth fewest – rushing attempts against eight or more box defenders. So you go from fourth fewest and obviously Braylon Allen is the most. So pretty huge change. And one of his tweets that he sent out in January when Longo was hired was saying, I'm not going to miss those nine man boxes, man. And so, yeah, it's something that he's very excited about. I know they're actually going to be using more of a committee this year with Ches Belusi, which he actually was excited about too. Ironically, uh, he said, you know, it's less hits on my body. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm excited to see this new look Wisconsin offense. It's going to look weird. It's going to look yeah. really weird seeing a, an air raid Wisconsin offense. Not the w- Wisconsin offense that we've grown accustomed to, you know, where it's a ground and pound kind of offense. It's going to be much more of a, a passing attack this year. Yeah. You know, it's, you mentioned the tweet, Braylon Allen. Like Wisconsin fans have been saying that same thing for years. We're done seeing nine man boxes. Like we're <laughs> almost like forget Braylon Allen. We've been seeing this for twenty years, Braylon. You've only been doing yep. it for two. Like we, <laughs> we are right there with him on that. We are ready to see offensive versatility. And I want to pivot to there because I actually think one of the underrated aspects of Braylon's game, and I want to get your take on it. I think he's a pretty natural receiver. Now mm-hmm. he doesn't have maybe the the in space explosiveness of a Blake Corum, but. How do you see him fitting into a Phil Longo offense that is going to ask him to go out as a receiver more often? Yeah, he, you know, he showed some ability there in his career so far. You know, he, he caught 21 of his 30 targets over his last two years. But uh, yeah, it's just it's something that he just hasn't really had an opportunity to do. And that was something that also that I was saying, hey, you know, wh- how excited are you for this upcoming season? What do you think sets you apart? And he was saying, yeah, man, I'm excited to become more of an all around running back this year. He's like, I want to prove to everyone that I'm the best all around running back in college football. And he mentioned the receiving. He mentioned pass blocking, too. I mean, those are two things that he just really wasn't required to do at Wisconsin because really that offense is predicated on Graham Mertz, you know, getting the ball from under center, and just handing it off to number zero. And that was basically the whole offense. So, yeah, he's really excited. And, he, you know, he mentioned in the interview, I'm sorry, Wisconsin fans. He mentioned that the plan is this is his last year of college football. He's not planning on coming back for a senior year, at least Uh, plans, of course, can change based on what happens. But he's planning on this being his last year. And he said, yeah, man, I want to show not only the country, but obviously NFL evaluators that he could be an all around running back as a receiver and a pass protector in what should be his last year of college football. So, yeah, I'm excited to see that this year because I I agree with you. I think it's something that he hasn't been able to show off, but it doesn't mean he can't do it. It just means he hasn't had the opportunity to do it, really. Uh, So, yeah, I'm excited to see him become more of an all-around running back this year. Well, and certainly as a running back, too, you should limit the amount of touches you take in college before you can start making money in the pros. Um, And it's win-win, right? If it's his last year in college, that means he had a terrific year and he's going to get drafted, which means Wisconsin's better on the field. That's what we're all cheering for, for sure. Although Mm -hmm. selfishly, we always want the guy to be like, "Ah, I just want to finish it out in Madison one more year. Right. No, that's that's totally win-win. I want to ask you just as a fan of college football. What do you see just when you turn on the film of Braylon Allen? We're going to get in in the next statement. We're going to get into some of the metrics, his broken tackle rate, how you evaluate running backs at PFF. But just as a fan of college football, the first time you put on the film of Braylon Allen, what do you see? Dude, he is a tank, man. Uh, that's that's the first thing you notice about him. I, mean, I, I when I actually asked him, I was like, "What sets you? What sets you apart?" And he was saying, "I'm my size. I think I'm just bigger than everyone else in college football." And it was funny because you you look at it when he was recruited out of high school. He was recruited as a linebacker, and he found out I think two weeks before his freshman year, uh, Coach Chris called him and said, "Hey, we want you to play running back." And he's like, "Oh, that's a dream come true." Because obviously, you know, you wanted to be next to Melvin Gordon. Uh, but yeah, he, he's built like a linebacker. He's six foot two. 235 pounds, but I think what makes him different than most, you know, tanks like that uh, is that he's not like a Jerome Bettis where it's, you know, two yards and a cloud Mm -hmm. of dust. He's more going to break off the long runs too. And he's had a multitude of, of long runs in his career. Now, I don't think he's a 4-3 back or anything like that, or a 4-4 even, but I think for his size at 235, he's got pretty good speed. Uh, So yeah, I think his size and speed, uh, he's just a tank. And the, and the fact that he can break off long runs like that makes him special. And in my opinion, makes him a top five running back in college football. 
That's great stuff from Max. All right, we're going to come back with Max, and we're going to talk a little bit about where would Braylon be ranked in an EA Sports game uh, if if he was dropping this year. Unfortunately, Braylon's going to miss that by one year, but we're going to see where Max would rank him. He had a great article talking about who would be the 99s in college football right now. Where is Braylon Allen on that list? We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers, but first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel remains uh, bet online. Our FanDuel remains locked on's number one sports book. And with the NBA playoffs going on right now, baseball going on, it's an incredible time to get started with our friends over at FanDuel. Make a fast break right now with the NBA playoffs. It's been an incredible playoff run for Jimmy Buckets. Is he going to keep it going against the unstoppable Denver Nuggets? Head to FanDuel, put your money where your mind is, and it's a great time because now you get your no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars back in free bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't hit, that's free money at FanDuel.com. I love it because FanDuel is easy to use. A customer support is incredible. You get paid instantly, and it's a safe and secure app. So many of these betting websites out here, you have to jump through hoops to get your money, even if you do win. FanDuel has taken all the guesswork, all the pain out of that. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get your no sweat first bet up to $2,500 back. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Um, I want to say thank you again for everybody tuning in, and we're going to bring Max back on the show here. Um, Max, I want to get into the metrics behind what PFF does. I want to start with, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions that PFF has people sitting in a room, maybe just grinding all day, but they don't really know what they're doing. How can you know what the plays are? How can you know what the assignments are? How can you possibly assign numerical values to these players? Uh, let's talk running backs. What is the process that PFF uses to evaluate running backs? Yeah, and the first thing that I uh, love talking about this, first of all, but it's the first thing I want to bring up when we talk about the grades and everything is that, you know, grades are just a small part of what we do. They're, they're obviously, you know, the the big number that everyone likes to go to, but it's, just, it's really a small part. And when I'm putting together these lists, I'm not just looking at the highest graded running backs and saying, oh, that's that's the exact order that I need to go in. It's a big part of it, but there are other stats that go into it and a bunch of other stats that we keep at. I think makes us better than any other analytic company out there. But, and the other thing I would say about grades too, is that they're not perfect, you know, and nobody at PFF will, will say to you, no, that's the end all be all. It's not. Um, but yeah, how we try to evaluate them. Um, and it's not just, you know, me, I actually don't do any grading, you know, they, they don't actually don't trust me with the grading. Uh, and I'm, you know, it's a lot of work too. So I don't do it. We actually have people that are trained endlessly to do this. And not only are they trained by, uh, some of the past graders that we've had, but some guys that have played in the NFL. So like uh, that we have like Bruce Gradkowski, for example, really did a lot of our grading for quarterbacks. And he taught the guys that now grade quarterbacks today, because obviously Bruce is busy uh, coaching now, but yeah, he used to teach us and he was a long time backup of the NFL. He knows what he's looking at, obviously. And he says, Hey, on these kind of plays, you want to be looking at this, this kind of play, you want to be looking at that. We have that from pretty much every position. You know, every position is, as we've had guys come to us and say, Hey, listen, this is what you want to be looking for, uh, for this guy on this play. So it's not just Joe Schmo, you know, guys that just watch college, college football for fun. It's guys that are really trained to do this and uh, evaluate it. But yeah, how we grade uh, games is every player, every play, every game from division one college football, all the way to division three, uh, NFL, obviously two XFL, USFL. And we assign it, uh, every play you get, you either get a negative two, which is like the worst play you could possibly have or a positive two, which is the best play you could possibly have. And it's increments of 0.5. So negative point one point five, negative one and so on. And then 1.5, whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like, that's how we grade every single play. Um, so yeah, again, not a perfect process, the highest graded player isn't necessarily who I think is the best player at a position. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely one that I think it, it gives you a better idea of who a player is better than any other stat that you can find out there. I think. Well, and I think you hit on something that that's really a smart way to look at it. I've always told people like, I like the PFF numbers. I'm not just saying that because I, I got max on the show. Um, I, I look at them. I like them because I use them as a data point, right? And right. you combine that data point with other data points. What do your eyes tell you? What does, mm -hmm. Your own, if you watch film, what does that tell you? What do coaches say? What do scouts say? And I think you take all these data points together, right? And everyone's going to value them differently. But don't just throw away a data point because you don't either don't understand the the science behind it or the metric. Um, so I, I really like that that approach. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Braylon Allen's grade specifically. Mm -hmm. Where where did he grade out? I know you wrote an article with the top five returning running backs this year. You have Braylon Allen number five, uh, Blake Corum. Badger fans know that name, leading the list. How did his grades work out, and, and what's something that jumped out of you after looking at the metrics behind Braylon Allen? Yeah, so he was number five running back, and if you're looking just purely – this is why I think, you know, 
PFF is so valuable because if you look at purely uh, rushing yards, Braylon Allen will be number one pretty much because he has the most rushing yards among returning power five running backs uh, and the most yards after contact. The thing with him, though, is that you got to remember, like he is getting <laughs> a lot of carries, which uh, I don't think he will be getting as much this year. But uh, the, the big thing for him that I think he could stand to improve on still is that, yeah, he's a good tackle breaker. Yeah, he's a tank, like I said, but uh, he only broke a missed tackle. He only forced missed tackle on like 23% of his carries in his career, which is a fine rate. But obviously, you know, the best running backs are usually getting in that 30 or higher percent range. Uh, and that's really an important stat that we look at because obviously a, a big thing with running backs is how much are you creating versus how much are your offensive line creating for you. And Wisconsin has always had a really good offensive line. And uh, so a big stat that we love to look at is, okay, how many times are you making defenders miss? And Braylon Allen is doing it at a fine amount. Um, but yeah, I think he's still a phenomenal running back. Like I said before, I mean, he does uh, get really good rushing yard. He averaged like six yards per carry in his career. So yeah, I still think he's a top five running back in the country. And his grade is, is solid. You know, is 85 is really, really good. Um, but there are other guys that are graded higher than him. But again, that's why I, I keep saying the grade is not the only thing you should be looking at because, you know, Braylon Allen would be lower on the list if I was just looking at grade. And I think he's, it's much more than just grade for him. And uh, that's why I think he's ultimately a, a top five running back in the country just because he's been unbelievably productive for Wisconsin over the last two years. Do you at, at any point grade a little bit on a curve due to his age? Obviously, Braylon Allen famously got to college as a 17-year-old, last year just an 18-year-old. Um, coming into his third season, I, he, this wasn't even a player that was predominantly a full-time running back in high school. It feels like he has more growth than a typical junior. Oh, yeah. And and no, we don't. Uh, we don't grade based on anything. Uh, but we as, as again, this is why I think um, – the highest graded list is different than my top 10 running backs list, because I do consider that, you know, I do look at that and say, Hey man, this guy was 17 years old playing linebacker until he like two weeks before he got there. Um, and then he actually was like fifth on the depth chart until like week five of that year. He still ended up having like 1300 yards and uh, what 13 touchdowns or whatever in his, uh, in his true freshman season. So like that to me, like that's big, you know, saying, okay, he's 17 years old. He's 18 last year, still at 1200 yards. Uh, and then he'll be 19 for literally all of his junior season, which is scary that, you know, he, if he enters the NFL after this year, like you said, he thinks he will, uh, he won't be able to legally drink until the playoffs of his second year in the NFL. Like that's Crazy. how young this guy is, which is actually absolutely insane. So yeah, again, the grades don't take that into account. They take nothing into account besides what you're doing on the field. But for me as an analyst, you know, I have to look at the grade and I have to apply other factors to it where, okay, Braylon was 17 years old and had an 85 grade, whereas another guy was a six-year senior and had an 85 grade, which is more impressive, probably Braylon Allen you're going to go to there. So, yeah, that's why the analysts try to put some more nuance into our rankings and that the grades would do. But, yeah, the grades don't don't look at that, and we don't really grade on a, grade on a curve or any of that. Random question I've always had, and I don't know if this happens. Is there any thought into – because you're, you're grading out every player. Um, if Let's say Wisconsin's offense line has a year where they grade out pretty well overall. Do you ever look at running backs and then compare their grades to their offensive line and how much better or worse they are? For example, a running back that maybe grades out an 85, but his offensive line grades out in an average of 67. The aggregate yeah. there is, is quite a bit different than a, a running back that might grade out with a really good offensive line. Yeah, and actually that does go into the grading too, is that you know mm -hmm. if um, a big thing with like say quarterbacks, if, if you throw a 70-yard touchdown pass to a wide open receiver, like that'll get you a, a decent grade you know but it's not going to get you a great one where offensive like a running back too it's like man if you have a wide open hole and nobody is even touching you you're going to get like a positive grade but you're not going to get like a 1.52 whereas if you're you know playing behind a bad offensive line you force four guys miss a tackle when you get a seven yard gain like that'll probably get you a pretty good grade and maybe even better than a you know a 35 yard touchdown when nobody even comes close to you and of course speed plays a part into that too which are graders uh, take into account but yeah it, that is sometimes where you look at some running backs and their grade just isn't really that high and even though they have a ton of rushing yards it's because they play behind a dominant offensive line and, and stuff like that so uh yeah that, that's why i i think um i think brandon allen has done enough on his own to warrant being a top five running back but wisconsin's offensive line too has been really really good so uh yeah it is something to definitely take into account especially at running back too because it is uh, it's a tough position to evaluate when you're looking at different situations that these running backs are in. I want to ask about you. You put something out, uh, wrote something, put it on Twitter as well. Uh, obviously, I've talked about this on the show. I love the the NCAA games, the EA Sports NCAA games. Who 
thankfully for the, our coming back in a year. I, I can't wait. We're going to have our own league. Um, I'm so stoked for it. You put out an article with the players that you would rank as 99s right now. Caleb Williams was on that list. Uh, Blake Coram was on that list. Um, a couple others as well. I was curious where, and I'm kind, of, I'm kind of springing this on you, so I don't expect a perfect answer, but where would you have Braylon Allen on the EA Sports rating list right now? Yeah, so I actually, when you, you told me you were going to ask me that, I looked it up real quick and looked at the highest uh, rated running backs. And so for me, Braylon Allen is the number five running back, like I said. So the number five running back in like EA, I think it's Saquon Barkley. Uh, he has like a 93 rating. Uh, I think I would put Braylon in like that 93, 94 rating uh, if I was making college football video game. And I, a lot of people are upset with that list. They're like, why would you even put this out? There isn't a college football video game. Like, dude, it's, it's May right now. You know, yeah. we have nothing else to do. I'm trying to have a little bit of fun with the offseason. Uh, but yeah, I would say 90, 94, I would say for Braylon Allen. I think he's, you know, a, a big thing for him is that the receiving is has just not been seen yet. So that's why I think might bump him down a little bit. And the, the pass blocking has really not been seen yet. But as a pure runner, he's probably up there with the best running backs in college football. So, yeah, if, if Blake Corum's a 99 and, and obviously Quinshawn Judkins, uh, Raheem Sanders, and other guys like that, Bucky Irving from Oregon, if I have them above him, I'd probably put Braylon Allen like 93, 94 range, I'd say, in an NCAA video game right now. I love it, man. And listen, it's never too early to talk NCAA video game. I'm never. telling you right now. I can't wait for it. Um, it's been over a decade, man. I mean, uh, why don't you want to talk about it? That's what I was saying. <laughs> it's been way too long, way too long. And I'm yeah. fascinated how, listen, we can do a whole show on this. How are they going to implement NIL, the transfer portal? I can't, I cannot wait. Um, <laughs> he is Max Chadwick, a, a college football analyst over at PFF. Um, go check out his work. We're going to tweet about, or we'll tweet out all the links to your work when we release the show. But Max, I definitely want to give you another opportunity. Where, can pe where else can people follow you? Uh, are you most active on Twitter or somewhere else? Yeah, of course. So you can follow me on uh, Twitter and I still not supposed to TikTok to at Chad underscore Maxwick. You can follow me there. Uh, and also, of course, you can follow find all my work at PFF.com. Got a ton of articles coming out soon. A lot of other players I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to talk to. And then, yeah, of course, you can follow all those interviews and other videos I'm posting. Like I've actually posted my top 10 running backs list on YouTube as well. A couple of highlights and everything. So I said preferred walk on a college football show. So you can find it at preferred walk on anywhere you get podcasts too. So yeah, it's pretty much where you can find me. Awesome, man. I love it. Thank you so much for uh, jumping in and uh, let's do it again at some point during the year or after the season. I'd love to Ryan. Thanks so much, man. Awesome. Thanks Max. All right. We're going to take a quick break, uh, jump into our, our friends of the show and then we're going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about why it's okay to be really excited about Braylon Allen this year. I've had some people push back and talk about you're being a little too optimistic Let's talk about why it's all right to get excited about this. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. Also want to say thank you so much for everybody tuning in. Uh, wherever you're finding it, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And let's keep it going. All right, so that was Max Chadwick. Really good guest. Dove into, he dove into Braylon Allen. We're going to release, uh, or not release, sorry. We're going to link all of his social media stuff so you can go check out his work, the interview that he did. But listen, I've talked about it a lot. I had... Just yesterday, we talked about who are your five best players on this Badger team. I'm like, well, Braylon Allen is the obvious one. Listen, he's going to be, if he can stay healthy, and some of that's just luck, right? Some of that, he's he's a year older, bigger, stronger. Like, he's been in the strength and conditioning program with Brady Collins for a year now. I think he's going to be more resilient. I think he's going to take less hits. He's going to have a monster year. Prepare yourself. Like, he potentially is going to have one of the great Badger running back seasons. And not by total yards, because he's not going to get those, those touches, but by efficiency, by yards per contact, or yards per carry. And, well, honestly, by yards per contact, too. He's going to be a bowling ball. But also just by impact. He is going to be so tough for defenses to guard when they're having to be spread out, when they're guarding for receivers, when they're playing vertically and horizontally in space now because we haven't stretched defenses vertically or horizontally for years right the jet sweep used to be a critical element of stretching defenses horizontally and we've mostly gone away from that we don't stretch defenses vertically we're going to do that both ways this year and Braylon Allen is going to gash the soft underbelly of defenses that are panicked about Phil Longo's passing game i i just can't wait to see it be excited for it i think he's in for a tremendous season Again, I think statistically, from an efficiency standpoint, yards per carry standpoint, he's going to have one of the better Badger seasons we've seen in 15 to 20 years. He's going to be right up there, right behind like the Monty Ball, Melvin Gordon um, tier. Like, because those tiers are ridiculous. 39 touchdowns or 2,600 yards. 
those are God tiers. Those, those are tiers in their own tier, but he's going to be right behind there. I think he's going to have a monstrous year. All right. I want to say thank you so much for everybody tuning in. I wanted to say also that we had tremendous feedback on the academic show we did with Justin and Rajiv. Great, great comments in the YouTube section that I'm still kind of going through, that I'm getting smarter with, that I'm chewing on. And one of the great things with this community we built around the Locked On Badgers brand is people are, for the most part, really respectful. Disagree, but be respectful. Bring your own points. But there's no name calling. There's no vitriol. You know, we can disagree respectfully and learn from each other. And I think that's one of the pillars we're building this community around. And I really respect the heck out of everybody in the comments section that is able to bring that level of kind of professionalism, not professionalism, respect, just respect, respect for different viewpoints. Here's where I am. I disagree with Rajiv or I disagree with Ryan or I disagree with Justin because of X, Y, and Z, but that doesn't make your point invalid. Right, it doesn't make your point any less worthwhile. So, I want to say thank you to everybody who has contributed to our community and done so in a respectful way. So, on Wisconsin, all the everydayers out there, appreciate y'all so much. If you're going to be with us tomorrow, we got Brian Smith coming on. Continue previewing that huge June second recruiting weekend. A lot of content coming up. Great interviews. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned on Wisconsin, and let's go.